let me catch you guys up really quick. So tomorrow morning, first thing, I'm leaving to Spain. I'm going to be gone for almost a week. So I'm starting my trip in Valencia, where I'm going for a friend's wedding, which I'm really excited for. And then after spending a few days in Valencia, I'm going to Madrid for the weekend, which I have done quite a bit of research on Madrid. I do have friends who have lived in Madrid or who are from Madrid, and they have given me some great recommendations that I'm really excited to share with you too. And the shopping is also meant to be incredible there, so much so that they actually have two RMS boutiques, both of which we're going to have to go and see. You guys know you don't have to ask me twice. What I have discovered is that there are two main spots for luxury shopping in Madrid, which if you're a local, please feel free to add to this or correct me. But one of them is a tiny mall in actually the same building as the Four Seasons. So after having brunch on the rooftop, I headed downstairs to one of the two RMS boutiques in the city, which this one is just slightly bigger than an airport store and even though they had a pretty decent selection of pieces it seemed that they really only had each piece in one or two sizes but the few things i wanted to put on your radar are this cashmere sweater that actually launched last year with this really cool shantung inspired elbow patch which i actually considered buying last year but my boutique never got it so i ended up with a different cashmere sweater and even though they brought the exact same design back for the current season it went up by 150 euros which is just insane but anyway if you're looking for a soft cashmere basic this comes in a handful of colors including marine which is a navy blue they do it in yellow which i think they called melon there is also camo which is this color that makes my complexion look gray and there's also an actual gray now i'm going horse riding in the next few weeks which i haven't done in like 20 years so i thought let me pick up some hermes equestrian bits hoping that it would entice me to take up horse riding again and i actually already have a few pieces from the equestrian range but the one thing i don't own is a t-shirt so i tried on this polo shirt which actually goes perfectly with my grooming bag because it's the exact same color combination as that bag with the orange trimming and the body of the piece being in blue and then lastly if you're a lover of sheep i thought you might enjoy seeing these being offered in matte alligator now it's quite rare to see these in alligator obviously you can always order them as part of the exotic lab but if you want to buy them off the shelf they did have these in these two different shades at this particular boutique not in many sizes however in fact i'm pretty sure they only had each one in a couple of sizes but if you're intrigued these matte alligator sheep will set you back just over 4800 euros If you follow me on TikTok, you'll recognize these Dior gardening boots, which I tried on when they first launched. They're not your typical rain boots. There's something almost futuristic about this chunky, really masculine shape. But if you want to see how they look on, you can actually find a dedicated video over on my TikTok. But the real reason I came into Dior was to see if they had any new tailoring pieces because when Kim Jones first took over Dior not a single season went by without me buying at least a couple of classic pieces that were updated with just the right amount of spice but I do think that he has been going kind of overboard for the past year as you can probably tell by these almost skirt like pants which just had one too many pleats and they were also a size too big but even if they fit like a glove as their pants used to i think these would have still drawn me in fabric and pleats but on another note if you're a fan of the ore bags you must see these there were two incredibly special bags on display one of them being this saddle bag that is exclusively offered in spain which is adorned with these sort of toreador inspired 
bubbles that I thought was really special and I also love the fact that the D emblem was also tone on tone. And then the other, which isn't actually exclusively offered in Spain, which doesn't make this bag any less special, but it is for those who are looking for a truly head turning piece. This by no means understated crystal encrusted Lady Dior bag, which can be yours for 7,700 euros. My last day I spent wandering around the city and after doing a bit of sightseeing I made my way over to the main shopping street which I'm not even going to try to pronounce but I'll make sure to leave the name up on the screen here and I first stopped by Celine where I came across this really cool vanity case which is quite reminiscent of the at this point iconic Louis Vuitton niece which don't get me wrong there is nothing wrong with but I just feel that this one looks more fresh and it's not something that you've seen being carried by every single luxury influencer out there. So if you're looking for a new vanity case to add to your travel collection, this might be something nice to put on your radar. And speaking of vanity cases, I haven't seen this pouch either, which is technically sold as a vanity case, but I think it would also make an incredible clutch bag. Right after Celine, I headed over to Hermes, where I first looked at some of the bags on display, which most of these bags we have already discussed in what's new from Hermes videos of mine, so I will make sure to have all of those linked down below for you. And instead of trying to quickly talk you through all these bags, I will just let you enjoy this little montage. And I will also make sure to leave the price of each individual bag up on the screen, just so you feel a little bit more informed next time you're at Hermes. Something we have not talked about before, however, is our Messi's yoga range, which is not brand new. It's been out for a few months, but I don't think I have talked about this before, which if you have not had a chance to look at these and you're into your active wear, this collection I think is so incredibly beautiful and I'm not an expert on yoga wear, but I can tell you that each material and each piece that I touched and played around with felt really substantial and really quite well made. I don't know what it is about this horse head print, but anytime I see Hermes use it, I just get creeped out. Maybe it's the way the eyes are depicted, 
but it just reminds me of a mask a serial killer would wear but anyway this piece is not even current it's from the previous spring summer collection but speaking of horses Hermes has just launched a brand new tableware collection which was actually designed specifically for breakfast this is the first collection which was designed for a specific moment and I have to say this is a collection I am obsessed with. It's quite simplistic compared to other collections while staying true to the whimsical spirit of Hermes homeware and of course it also pays tribute to show jumping and the brand's equestrian heritage which is also where the collection's name Sot I believe is pronounced comes from which is a collection that I cannot wait to start adding to my own collection. Honestly there weren't too many pieces I was eager to try but this coat would have been a sin not to share with you because few brands do cashmere coats as beautifully as Hermes does and this was no exception. It's a double faced baby cashmere wrap coat from the women's range with the most subtle yet intricate details. First of all it does feel heavenly soft, baby soft I should say. I mean Hermes's cashmere coats are soft to begin with but this baby cashmere is just next level. It comes with a removable belt and I also really liked the subtlety of the engraved wooden buttons and I think it's certainly a piece that could be unisex especially considering how oversized the fit is but do keep in mind that the sleeves are insanely short especially on me I mean just look at how comically short these were on my alien like tentacles but I know it's not going to be the case for everyone and if you're interested this coat comes in two different colors Bleu Noir being one of them and Brun Louvet I believe it's pronounced is the other. Now speaking of blue there was a silk shirt from the men's collection that I thought I would try honestly because I didn't realize it was blue until I had a proper look at it in the fitting room. Had I known it was blue I would have never tried it. I'm just not someone who's into patterns but I did so here is what it looked like. The last piece I tried at Hermes was quite a showstopper, literally, because it was from the full winter runway collection, which is not something that you will see too many of floating around out there. In fact, I was told that it was specially sent to this boutique for an upcoming trunk show that will be happening next week in Madrid, but since they already had it in stock, they let me try it, and it was this super chunky merino sheepskin coat with these oversized horn tabs that is certainly for those who love a warm cozy hog of a jacket. I think this particular shape is called the duffel coat by Hermes which they're offering in two different colors so many of you wanted to know more details when I shared a picture of this on my Instagram so the two colors that it's being offered in for the season are dark gray which is this one and then it also comes in a natural ivory color and the price is 15,000 euros or $18,700. Pretty sure I have talked about this before but in case you didn't know my favorite painter is Mark Rothko who doesn't actually have too many paintings currently on display in museums so anytime I travel somewhere where there is a Rothko exhibition I have to go see it and they actually had an incredible large-scale Rothko view in Madrid so if you're a fan of modern abstract art or if you've never seen a Rothko painting and you don't understand what the hype is all about this is a must while you're visiting and this actually concludes my trip to Spain immediately after I had to check out get my luggage but I think I still had like 30 more minutes to kill which I spent doing a little bit of studying under the Spanish sun. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed coming to Spain with me and you had as much fun watching these vlogs as I did filming them. If you would like to see more vlogs from me, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And if you haven't seen part one and you would like to catch up, I will make sure to have it listed in the info box for you. But I really appreciate you being here and coming to Spain with me. You guys have been the best travel buddies and I cannot wait to see you back here with one of our usual videos from back home really really soon.